Okay, I'll begin the recording. Uh, so everyone, welcome to our uh, Saturday call. Um, <clears throat> I think that we're probably going to have the weekend calls tend to be a little bit on the on the more uh, mellow side. We'll, we'll assume that some people are taking their time off, but um, thought I'd start by just seeing if there's any any announcements people want to make. The one from communications I'll make right now is that we do now have the software running properly to create our org charts uh, based off of our um, teams and coordinator spreadsheet, uh, which is uh, part of our project asset sheet. So that's, that's good. My hunch is that it, a lot of it is going to be either out of date or incorrect, and it'll hopefully give us a sort of focus and see what's going on there um, and, and refresh our, our understanding of who's doing what. Um, announcements that folks have? All right. Um, why don't we do a quick run through of our task teams and uh, and see again what, what progress, what blockers are there, anything in particular you'd like to discuss. With the reminder that on Monday we'll then be going back into doing a zoom in on one of the specific teams. And I believe uh, Christine, I think you're doing uh, Tuesday, is that right? What are you doing? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. Um, so uh, who would like to start off? Do we want to, to jump in with Test Geo and see, see where things are at? Yep. Uh, here in Tazio, we have at least uh, no blockers, but also no progress. Uh, we have been just discussing and putting everything in order. Uh, I hope on Monday we start giving uh, new deliveries. Great. Great. Uh, how about uh, VT? How are things going? Hey, uh, things are going well. Pretty much same as yesterday. I had a couple more discussions with people, so we're pushing projects along. And um, yeah, just you know, early stages still. Uh, and how about ties? What's going on there, Christine? Mm, yeah, pretty much the same. And we we are trying to spend more time doing research on like the data extraction methods, uh, different approaches, and before we actually really <coughs> dive into any of those, we want to see just options. And then uh, also we're still recruiting uh, people to work on them. I just put in a request in the coordination channel. Yeah, so that's what. Thank you. And do we have someone who's here from RISC? If not, I'll also just check in to see if we have anyone who is either from uh, Search Engine or from the Treatments team. I see uh, Baogyan is joining. Great. So we've just done sort of a, a, a tiny bit of uh, introduction, Arthur. I see you're here as well, uh, and gone through our, our basic teams. I don't know if you have anything that you'd want to sort of throw it there for folks as well? No, yeah, I'm, I'm still catching up while okay. freaking out, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so next thing I'd like to talk a little about is, you know, we're trying to uh, do a little bit of a better understanding of the organization, get our term terminology figured out and such. Um, I had put this into one of the channels, but I'll maybe throw it out here as well. Um, does it make sense if we, we now have our team leaders channel if we're starting to refer to um, the folks who have been up until now coordinators, so folks like Dan, folks like Manuel and Maya as team leads, and then the people who I have been doing what at one point has was called advisors, at one point was called PMs, um, really that is coordination. It is about trying to coordinate all the stuff that that team needs. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to find clear, concise terms for those for now. Um, if those work for people, let's go for that. Let me know if it doesn't. And then other than that, I'm trying to, with each team, I'm, I'm touching base with the team leaders to figure out who's on your team. And then with each of those people, I'm just saying like, what, what, what would you call yourself? What's the role that you're having on, on team? With the understanding that a lot of people are on multiple teams and that some people are kind of free floating in between. Um, so just a quick check in to see, does, does that work for people terminology wise? Or if someone has something that they would wanna propose that's better? The main thing is just clarity. Yeah, I think it makes sense. And um, I'll, I'll be posting this uh, knowledge bomb uh, that I recorded was uh, Max Patapo on, you know, kind of the underlying things in terms of us having a common language and common speech. 
for us to be more efficient in kind of grouping and coordinating things because there are many many scenarios where like we're in these calls or in groups and we talk about the same thing without realizing that and then we disconnect and we feel that we need to find some other group that you know understands us better instead of communicating uh, you know in in that common speech and <coughs> I've seen that pattern over and over. And I think the, the crucial piece for us to enable efficient collaboration is to maximize this convergence to the common speech. I think the, the thing that really helped was the creation of that motivation and purpose channel because it kind of helped bridge everyone together to understand why we're here instead of what we're doing. Because essentially, like whenever you see the resonance of this common goal, common speech, you immediately start thinking in different directions whom you should be working with on what. So th that's kind of a, uh, a, a real thing that I'm observing. No, that's great. Uh, uh, one thing I'll also throw out there is um, if there are people, so one of the things that we're trying to identify, you know, we have our formal teams that exist, um, but also uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, Amazon as an example of someone who, you know, we've noticed like, here's somebody who is zooming around, finding out a lot of the different tasks that need to get done, taking on different tasks in different places. And so we're realizing, okay, like maybe he might need some help with that. So, so I'm checking in with him to see, you know, other people who he, he needs as helpers in, in being able to do that. Similarly, if any of you are finding, whether you're on the call or if you're watching it after, if you're finding that you tend to be taking on a lot of different tasks, you're good at structuring those tasks, but you have so much on your plate that you can't follow through on those pieces, I'm guilty, um, then it's a great uh, opportunity to see if you can find people who are interested in, in helping. So feel free to keep to, to recruit from among either the people who are here in Corona Y or from outside to keep that flow going. Because we need those people who are looking, seeing what tasks don't necessarily have someone assigned to it, or ideating new pieces that are helpful for us to be doing, um, and then grabbing people. Again, as long as we're keeping that focus, on what are we doing for our round two submissions and on all of the other pieces that are, are directly for our mission, then that's helpful. Um, let's see, uh, we, can, we can kind of maybe, we're at 10.10, we have a little bit of time. Why don't we move into a little bit of Q&A and then we can have some, some general kind of uh, ideation or some talk about direction for this, for this round, next leg of round two. It feels like we're just in that stage of moving from uh, taking the step back, figuring out what we're doing, and just getting ready to start the production piece coming up soon. So let's start with that QA piece. Is there, are there any, any questions or ideas that people want to float? I do realize that there's a need for annotators, and we know there are uh, a, a group of people working with several teams, so that's like something that you just mentioned, and I think we need a little more organization for, and more annotators to um, for that. So to, to sort of formalize and have it so that we can have right. a can team that we know who's on it that any of those other team leads can kind of talk to and pull, pull in some annotators? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Who are the people who you've been noticing are, are those frequent annotators who we can then pull together? Um, so Dan and I have been working with Iman and, and his team of um, about 10 medical students. But I, I think there's more from other uh, teams, but I'm not sure, yeah. No, that's great, well, we, can, we can start there and then we can kind of fill, fill in who some of the other people are. And of course, anyone watching this who's interested in doing annotation, um, just come in and you can, you can talk to any of us to, to get plugged into that channel. As well. I think maybe Sarah Wellen has also a team of annotators. Okay, great. Sure. And we can still work at figuring out how scale AI fits in. If that if that ends up being a useful resource, how do we how do we make best use of that? Because we, we definitely want anytime people are offering us useful services, if it does actually help us, then the more we make make use of it, the better, both for for ourselves and it, it lets them know that we're it, it's worth giving us the sponsorships. Yeah. Any, any other pieces or? or other kind of questions or ideas people have that they want to float? Is there a quick update on that uh, unbundling of the task VT into like different um, 
uh, groups focusing on specific tasks. I missed the call yesterday, but I would love an update. Um, you mean like having subgroups? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so essentially there are like uh, six project teams now, and each project team has a project leader. And we're hoping to expand <laughs> the team's capacity by maybe two or three times and get a lot of people to help out with each of those projects. Um, and then I also, yeah, showed my little system schematic of how those all fit together. So, I'll yes, we, we're, we're doing that kind of thing. How do you, as uh, you know, as a person who drives the this unbundling, how do you quantify the needs of specific groups? And is there like, you know, this thing that I call momentum, like for for the group to make sure that they sustain the project? Um, needs for the individual project team. So there's kind of like a well-defined end goal for what we want as far as deliverable, who's using the thing that we're making, et cetera. Once we have that in mind, then we're breaking it down into a bunch of little tasks which correspond to Trello cards. And then from that point, uh, I think it's pretty clear what kinds of additional help we'll need. Like if we want to test three different models for a thing, maybe we can get three people to do that kind of thing. Um, and then we ask for like, okay, we need someone with NLP experience who can give I don't know, five hours or whatever it is. So as we unpack what the work actually, you know, entails to get to the final deliverable, then it, it becomes clear what the needs are for that project. Okay. And who's leading this, uh, like formal formalization of the tasks and like the actual breaking down of the work. Yeah. Me also. Oh, nice. So you will be the person that will observe the actual like missing pieces, right? Like whenever you'll create a task and there will be no person to assign it to, right? Yeah. So over the weekend, yeah, <laughs> over the weekend and Monday, I'm talking to each of the project team leaders. And then we're just first hashing out like the concrete ideas of the project and some of the details. And then I asked the project leaders to come up with a bunch of those Trello cards. And then we're going to put them on the board and, you know, talk through which ones we might have to break down further, uh, make sure that the, the work is well defined and scoped properly. And then, then I'll just start reaching out to the needs coordinator channel for specific needs for specific projects. Okay, sounds great. Daniel, you wanted to, to show something. Well, uh, that, that was me just doing doing a quick a quick scan through of uh, of that piece. So we're I'm I'm trying to make it into a bigger canvas, but that was simply me showing. So you know we've got now um, for the org chart, kind of going through here down to the task teams. We hop over to Dan Sosa and back teams and therapeutics. Uh, we now do have the breakdown of each of those different sub teams that's going to exist. Right now, um, there's not much you can do with this. It's soon I'll be making it so that hopefully you can click on the person to get to their LinkedIn and you can click on the task as soon as we have documentation around each of those and kind of their, their description of what their project is about. We'll make it so that you can, can click through and link straight to that. Looks awesome. Um, and also, I'm, I'm, I also say I'm, I'm an aesthetic fool, and so if somebody who has a better eye than me can help me figure out how we make that look nicer, <coughs> with D3 experience who can help us lay that out in a, in a nicer way, then that's great. Um, oh, um, Daniel, got a question. Like, so what about like for all the people who are just like all over the place? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that one thing that we might do. So for any of those where uh, there is a, a specific, like some people like you, there's a couple of teams that you're on, but actually we, before you got here, we were talking a little bit about also the fact that you, you do do some sub, sort of free floating and that may become a team, it's sort of like a cross pollinating team. And you know, Tyler's another great example of somebody who, um, it's not that there's a fixed team that's doing that, but that he's zipping back and forth between all of the different teams to give an understanding of what's going on and kind of cross pollinate. Um, my hunch is we're going to have a few different charts that we make for different purposes. This is one that's great for, for outer interface and for being able to understand a bit more of that top down piece. I'm thinking I'm going to make a nested circle chart um, to show a, a different mode of how it is that we're functioning and that'll be able to show some of those free floating teams a little bit more. Um, and I, I don't know for our database folks. Um, I know we have a lot of power BI, but if there's if there's other people who are D3 folks, if you want to, to kind of let me know. Um, I'm starting to use uh, Observe and starting to use the notebooks that are there. And it makes it really, really easy for us to take our different data sets and plug those into different kinds of graphs or charts so that we can show uh, 
elements of our organization or of our, any of our other data uh, that, that don't, don't sort of fit into an organizational chart like that. But, but definitely the key thing is anyone who is in those free floating roles, let, let us know as well. If anybody has a, a role that they're taking on that doesn't fit into a chart, um, if, you, if you ping me and let me know, we'll figure out uh, how, to, how to make sure people are aware of, of who's doing what. In those um, great. Um, well, there's, there's no reason to uh, overextend, but if anybody has any sort of final pieces that they'd like to talk about. Oh, one thing I will mention um, is to just see if people want, we can set up this weekend another sort of free forum chat channel. Certainly it seems like there was a lot of interesting uh, fruitful conversation that happened on that last weekend. Uh, and so we can always set one of those up again. But beyond that, if, uh, if anybody has any, any final comments, we can, we can make those now and then we'll head off into the rest of this, this chunk of our weekend. With, um, with regards to like last Sat Sunday's really long call that Art has just put up, did he get muted? Have you gone through it? Has the music been muted out of it? Or is like big, big sections of it being muted by, by YouTube because of like copyright reasons? Oh. Because I'm, ex I'm expecting it to happen, but I just don't know. I've literally, I've just been chilling out and spending a bit of time with my, my family and my lady. So I'm, I've not really well, read. I, know, I was up a few hours ago doing stuff and then I've, I've kind of slunk off for a bit. I haven't checked it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, there's, there may be sufficient noise over top of it in terms of the discussion that at least for the parts that are most salient, hopefully they won't have been, won't, won't have any kind of muting that's happened. But yeah, it's a good question. I'll scan through it when once we've dropped our call, I'll scan through and listen, see if it's happened. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, also, I, uh, I thought I would check to see if we want, and this is just sort of seeding an idea there, um, but we should start seeing how we can tap into each of the networks of all of the different members who are here a little bit better. As an example, um, you know, I work at UBC's Emerging Media Lab, um, and when the uh, post was made around the, the, the NASA ventilator project, uh, making 3D printing, I was able to pass that on to them. They were already working on doing some 3D printing, but now they're able to incorporate that in. And the more we understand, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I, I agree with Arthur that the key part of what we're doing is that we're, like, we're all here and it doesn't really matter. Our titles don't matter. Our egos ideally don't matter. Any of those pieces from the outside world aren't important. It's what we're doing here that <clears throat> that's what we're engaging around. But with that said, also, the more we understand what those networks and what the, the ways we're able to interface in the outside world are, uh, the more we're able to sort of make, make good use of that and make good connections. Because uh, there may be a lot of places where you know, somebody happens to be living in a dorm in a university doing medical research, um, and we can easily make a poster that they could slap up on a cork board or something or other. Not, not with social isolation that, that that makes as much sense, but but you get the basic idea of what I'm saying. That yeah, yeah I, one, sorry, yes. I was I got muted and I didn't hear anything because of uh, Google <laughs> Chrome eating my RAM. It's um, it's one of the reasons why um, I put that I've put a couple of links up because I found like. People have like collated lots of different groups doing lots of different things. Some of them localized, some of them, you know, regionalized, some of them like international. And I'm like, this is the first time I've found someone who's just collated, not obviously not all of them, but a big chunk. And nice. a big chunk is a place where we can go, oh, actually, if they're really good at resourcing for, you know, data, like finding data for that region, can we interface with them and use what the data sets they've made and put them into geo and make our geo thing better? And, and then, you know, it's just... It, it's, that's where I look at is like if why duplicate work if we can find someone else yeah. who's already doing a good job and we can use their data that obviously check it's good and it makes sense and also make sure like that open data standards and we can learn about everyone else's open data standards and try and work out how to um, use everyone else's data openly and clearly and, and succinctly and just yeah. yeah and make it all work better that's why I look way, uh, I'm having a call next week with this guy that is uh, kind of leading the Kaggle um, AI literature view angle. Uh, Anthony, CEO of Kaggle, messaged me and connected me with this guy, Tayeb. And he seems to be uh, from medical space. And he has this sheet where he has different Kagglers being assigned to different risk factors. So, yeah, I'll, uh, whoever wants to join that call can also join to see what he is working on. 
and how we can bridge that AI literature review uh, ideation between us and uh, Kaggle community. Amazing. One of the pieces I'll throw out there is that because we're coming from such totally different backgrounds, both in terms of culture and in terms of kind of the culture of organizational structures, um, to, to recognize that, I think we've said this a few times, but it bears repeating, if it looks like we're doing something in a boneheaded way, it might be that we're doing things in a way that's very different and alien to, to what you're used to, but it might be that we're doing it in a boneheaded way. And so always feel free to point out if you think there's a better way that things can be going. Um, and you wouldn't believe the number of different times that somebody simply sort of taps one of us on the shoulders like, hey, I mean, there's probably a reason, but why aren't we doing this? And we're like, oh yeah, of course we should be doing that, but we're just, we're too sleep deprived and, and, and surfing the chaos to have thought of that. And, and dispersed across so many different things that they didn't think of a very specific use case that you just isolated and going, why do you do that? It's like, oh, that's a really good idea. Let's do that. Yeah. I completely forgot, or I just didn't yeah. even know that existed. Exactly. Yeah. So really, I it's mean, one of, yeah. It's one it's, of the reasons why I'm trying to do so much research on organize, over organization systems to be able to like, I don't want to try and invent anything. I'm just going to steal everybody else's good ideas and mix it all into one pot and do as li make it as effective and streamlined and automated as possible because I don't want to have to. Yeah, change. and how many different things we've actually spoken about on that long call in terms of that. Like we all had different ideas and perspectives. Like you had that Ricardo Semler whatever book uh, Marco had the Holacracy Zappas uh, background. I had the Ray Dalio, Bridgewater, and Netflix. And those things are kind of, all of them are useful. It's just a matter of us combining all of that knowledge and creating something yeah. <coughs> applicable. Yeah, as well. Okay. If we can learn, if we can learn from other people, we don't, yeah, it's, you know, there's a rather famous um, documentary I really enjoyed called Everything's a Remix, and it is a really good highlight of, like, nobody invents really anything. It's very rare that yeah. a new thing is invented. More often than not, it is an iter iteration on somebody else's idea, maybe with some, some other elements that are either a, new, a unique take on something that already exists in a different space, or a, they're always a version of something. There's very few things that are completely never been thought of before, never been created before. It's like they're always Especially an adaption, an element, if, a remix. And then, and the world has become invented. So like this there's, there's so many things already invented and created. Why would you try and re yeah, reinvent the wheel, but not even reinvent the wheel. You won't want to try and reinvent databases. I mean, it's like, why, why would you? <laughs> yeah, especially if we're talking about the basic, like, human things, you know, collaboration and things like common speech. And the reason why the, the call that the knowledge bomb that I'm going to drop uh, that I discussed about the common speech may sound weird, like, in, in a weird way, but we actually took Bible and took passages from Genesis mm -hmm. or whatever, and we actually went through those you know things and it resembles a lot in terms of like techno technological singularity it resembles the the ways for people to efficiently collaborate and the babel tower being the analogy of many different people speaking the same language in common speech and building and creating this these building blocks to achieve the moonshot project is like holy shit, like it, it was already discussed 2,000 years ago. Yeah, no, interesting looking at which sorts of, it's like a pattern language writ large, which are the things that are simply, do get reinvented again and again. And the, the, the system, mm. especially the challenges that we learn about, about, about them each time through. How much do you use to $50 to address? $40. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wind this call down there. And then if folks do want, we can create a, a secondary call or we can keep on exploring some of these different ideas that are coming up. That seems like it might be a good idea. I mean, uh, I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind a chat about organization because we, yeah. we, we never actually have official coordinator calls. We always have everything else and never anything about coordinators specifically. Yeah. And we kind of, we kind of <laughs> infuse all calls with a little bit of coordination talk. And it'd be nice to be able to, if we can iron out some like more concrete thoughts on yeah, what, the hell we like or what we're interested in. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm happy to, at some point. I think it'd be interesting because that way we don't have to take up main call. And if anyone you know specifically is interested, it gives people more chance to actually join in rather than yeah. going, oh, what, what are these bastards talking about again? Just muttering stuff I don't care about. You know, at least we, we get the people do, who are interested. Do we, do we want maybe tomorrow after the daily call to just slide right from there into maybe a bit of an organization? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, yeah, I could do half an hour afterwards because I have my D&D about half seven, so, and my data calls about six, so I've got an hour and a half space okay. there. Okay. Well, yeah, I at some point, though. I, I, I think the, the key thing with all of these things is experimentation and iteration. We can, we can try that, see how it works, and then see if we need to tweak kind of when we do it in the details for, for how. But, all right. Good stuff. We'll talk to you all soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers.